If you've been seeing a guy formally or casually and you can't put your finger on it, but it sure as hell feels like you're giving more than you're getting back, and he may not be a mean guy or a bad guy, but if you're honest with yourself, you recognize that he's not investing in you the way you're investing in him, he might be unconsciously or covertly using you. So today I'm gonna to reveal six signs that intelligent and generous women often miss so you can put a stop to this nonsense and finally start getting treated the way you deserve. First things first, these things are not usually black and white. Because if a guy is being blatantly abusive in his usage of you, unless there's a deep-seated wound of self-worth, you'll probably recognize it sooner, your friends will let you know, the equation will feel really unbalanced, and you'll probably end up leaving him. But when things don't start off as unbalanced and they become unbalanced, when you have a great degree of physical, emotional attraction or sexual attraction towards a guy, and he starts showing up and things shift and he starts investing less in you, but you're hooked, you're emotionally connected, you're attached to him, then it's more likely, especially if you're generous, if you're empathetic, if you're one of those women who would like to see the best in others, which is a great quality, but can also be a great drawback, then you might get stuck in a situation that's progressively getting worse without recognizing it. You may wake up one day, two years later, upside down with a lower self of confidence and feeling like you're getting the super short end of the stick. So my goal for you today is to number one, remove the shame from the situation. If you're feeling like this might be happening, the first line of the fence is stop feeling guilty, stop feeling dumb, stop feeling like there's something broken in you, because there's not. I've worked with hundreds of very, very smart high achievers who fall for the situation, so intelligence has nothing to do with it. It might be that you went through a home situation where what you learned was home, was something where you had to prove yourself constantly, where you were dismissed by both your parents or one of them, where you always wanted love and you got less love, but that feels comfortable, even if it's painful. It might be that you don't understand how much you're capable of asking. It might be that your confidence is right now suffering a little bit, and as a result of that, you don't think you can go for more. But whatever the case may be, I want to remove the shame from the situation and let you know that if you understand that this is a skill, and that this is a skill you can learn, then you can, just like a player witnessing three moves ahead that she's about to be checkmated, you can recognize the signs, and then the second part of this is, you. my goal is for you not necessarily to say, this guy is out, I'll never talk to him again, but if the situation merits it, if the guy is not mean, if the guy is not a bad human being, and you feel there might be hope that you can have a great conversation with him, vulnerable, courageous, where you give him a chance to step up. And if he can step up, that you have a much better relationship as a result of it. If he can't, that you remove yourself and walk away so you can get the relationship you want. Hello, my name is Bern, and if you'd like to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now to be notified of new episodes as they come out. The first sign that you're being used is an inconsistent communication style, which means not necessarily that he never reaches out, but he reaches out when he needs something from you. And the way you recognize that is he reaches out, but he's not necessarily saying, how's your day going and what do you need from me and how can I make your life better, metaphorically or verbatim. He's reaching out to you when he's bored. He's reaching out to you when he's horny. He's reaching out when he needs something from you. And then when you reply back and when you're, you're wanting to connect more, then when he gets his fix, he's out. And he might disconnect for a few hours or even a few days sometimes. So know that a guy who wants to invest in you is going to show not only consistently in your life, but as the relationship progresses, the consistency intensifies, the consistency solidifies. He gets more connected instead of less connected. Number two, and this is painful when you recognize it, is that his enthusiasm and kindness get intensely higher when he wants something. For example, Back in the 90s, if you went to a mall anywhere in America, uh, many cheesy stores had it in their salespeople that the moment you walked in, they smiled with a fake smile and they complimented you for something to attempt to gain your grace so that you would buy something from them. And it felt so fake and icky that to this day, almost 30 years later, I still remember it. So when a guy is 
passive, when a guy is unenthusiastic and then you start noticing that he's praising you in a way that goes above and beyond what he usually does and then as soon as you relax into it, boom, he lets, it he lets you have it. He asks for something and it's typically not something that feels fun for you to share. He might be asking for cash, he might be asking for more physical connection even though he hasn't earned it in terms of the emotional connection first. Whatever the case might be, when you recognize and sense that his enthusiasm, his praise of you, his connection with you exponentially changes and then he goes for something that feels like a trade versus an actual sharing of love, that's a subtle sign that you might be being taken advantage of right now. The third one is his passionate versus intimacy ratio is in balance. And typically, not on the intimacy side, but on the passionate side. And by passionate, I mean he wants to connect with you physically. He wants that connection. He wants that influx of energy. But when you're asking for some hugs and tender kisses, and when you want to have conversations around things that matter to you, to go deeper, to get to know you, to connect with you, to learn about you, to figure out the mystery and the uniqueness that you are, he's not as interested in that as he's interested in the excitement and the passion. And here's the thing, if you've been wanting connection for a while, if you want intimacy, if you find him attractive, if you find him compelling, then you might fall for it at times. The problem becomes, and here's how you'll recognize it, when you want more, when you've given him what he wants, and now it's your turn to ask for something, he's like tired, it's almost like he had his fix and now he's not interested in going the distance. He's not interested in more intimacy. He's interested in intensity versus intimacy. Now, before I go in through four, five, and six, if you're a single woman watching this or you're in a situation ship, which kind of is being single, and you don't understand fully the root cause, the number one reason why you're single, then I've taken 12 years of helping women in every kind of love challenge you can imagine, every continent of this earth, and identified what are the most prevalent but missed blind spots that prevent women from finding love. So if you want to find out the answer to this question, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description, uh, answer a few simple questions, and then in 60 seconds you'll have two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single, and a report that will show you based on your unique blind spot what is the most time-effective action you can take starting today so you can course correct this trend and attract the guy you want much faster. Fourth sign, and sometimes it's not as obvious as it seems, is an uninspiring financial dependency. Here's the situation. Both men and women go through shit in life. Both men and women go through financial challenges and crisis. So there's nothing wrong if the guy you're with is going through one, if he's doing something to get out of it. The challenging situation becomes when he's going through one and he's starting to depend on you, and not only is he depending on you, but he's not carrying his weight in other areas, right? Just like you can depend on him at times if the situation arises, I think that there's nothing wrong if he every now and then needs to do this, so long as it's not the basis of the relationship, and so long as it's, he's quickly doing something to change it. But when he's not doing something quickly to change it, and he's not contributing emotionally, and he's not contributing in other ways, and he's starting to become a weight on you without necessarily giving something back that really uh, compensates for the ask, then this is unhealthy. And again, I'm talking about this with nuance because if I were just talking black and white, I would say, if a guy ever needs something from you financially, kick him out to the curb. That's unrealistic and that's bullshit. Just like it would be unrealistic for me to say, if you ever need something from him financially, he should kick you to the curb. I think that things happen but when it's uneven, and when it's consistent, and when things are not getting better, and when things are not just not getting better financially, not getting better in other ways, then this is an indication that you're being taken for a ride. Number five is your conversations around commitment turn him off. He can talk about what he's interested in. He can talk about sex. He can sex to at three in the morning. But when you bring up a five minute conversation around future plans, around family, around uh, connecting with your friends and about commitment and he's put off and he's sharing with you how much pressure you're putting on him and how needy you are, then that's a sign that things are uneven because the only reason most women put up with certain things in men is because they know that there's going to be something at the end of the situation, of the relationship, that pay is a payoff. 
And if right now you've been putting off with some things, your goal is to get married, your goal is to have children, your goal is to take it all the way, and he's not really acting that way, then it's really important for you to note that you're playing Russian roulette with fire at the same time. Number six is he's unenthusiastic about your interests. He just doesn't care. He's not super hungry to get to know more about your friends, not super hungry to get to know about your dreams, not super hungry to get to know about your hobbies, not super hungry to know about your work, not going the distance in terms of your emotions and your well-being overall. And the situation is one where as long as he's talking about himself and his friends and his interests, he's all about presence, but the moment you talk about something else, he's on his phone, he's watching TV, he's calling it quits early, he's falling asleep, then that's an anonymous situation. So here's the thing, depending on the degree to which this is happening, you might just say, you know what, this is horrible, I'm just recognizing right now, this sucks, I'm out. But if you're like most human beings, in a situation that's not horrible, but it's mediocre, then what you wanna do is you need to have two conversations in this order, because if the first one, the answer is no, then the second one is gonna be a waste of your time. The first one is, is he still into what you're into long term? Is he still going for that marriage? Is he still going for that family? Is he still going for that deepest level of connection, if that's what you're looking for? And if the answer is he's confused or he doesn't know, you need to take a break. Why? Because not only is he not acting in a way that makes you feel excited and secure, but he doesn't know what he wants, which means you're really playing with fire. Now, if he says, I really want what you want, it's just a challenging situation for this, this and that, then the second part of the conversation is, hey, I've noticed that there's three specific areas right now where I'm feeling things that are really unbalanced. I really care about you, I want our future to grow, and I'm feeling uncertain right now because when this happens, this happens and this happens, I feel like I need more. Can you step up for me? Have a conversation and then see how he reacts. There's gonna be three possibilities. One, he reacts saying, I'm sorry, and watch me take action, and he's gonna springboard into making things better for the, for the relationship and for you, or he's going to say, I don't know if I can do this, and that you have a decision to make then, or he's gonna say, no thanks, you're asking for too much, this is your problem, you're too needy. And again, if that's the case, then you need to move on. You need to do what's best for you. You need to do what can grow the relationship if possible, if you care about him, but if he can grow, if he doesn't wanna do it, you cannot love him for the both of you. You cannot commit to the relationship for the both of you. You need to do it for yourself, and he needs to do it for himself. And you can't carry the weight of someone for an extended period of time if he doesn't want what you want. I hope this is helpful and useful, and if it is, it would mean a lot to me and to my channel if you click like and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna learn more ways where you can attract the guy you want much faster, then go watch this video right here. Thank you.